Ever since its release in August of 2013, Geometry Dash has always had an ever-increasing level of difficulty. And ever since the introduction of the Demon difficulty, players and creators all around the community have pushed the level of difficulty far beyond what anyone could have imagined. At one point, Cataclysm was considered impossible for anyone but hackers. But fast forward just a few years, now being considered a perfect beginner extreme, Cataclysm is considered one of the easiest extreme demons in the game. What the players and creators have managed to do with difficulty over the years is remarkable. From Bloodbath to Tartarus, the community has almost seen it all. We've seen difficulty get blown out of the water many, many times. But what happens when a level capable of defying the odds flies under the radar? It doesn't happen too often, but sometimes, levels that have a chance of difficulty defying potential seemingly get swept under the rug, and either get very little traction, or get almost completely forgotten about after somebody verifies them. Even formerly impossible levels have a chance of suffering this fate, but more often than not, they end up getting star rated at the very least. But despite all that, there is one formerly impossible level that has, for over six months since its verification, seemed to have been almost completely forgotten about. And I guarantee that not a lot of people know about it. And according to the verifier, the level in question was even able to match Tartarus in its level of difficulty, if not harder than that. The level in question is not only not really known about, but it also carries with it an incredible challenge. This is the hardest demon you've never heard of. For the beginning of this story, we're going to have to go all the way back to 2015. More specifically, the middle of the 1.9 era of the game. It was a thriving community, with new and exciting things popping up all over the place. And it even had a forums page detailing a list of the hardest levels in the game. But along with that, there was another type of level that has, and still does, continue to catch the attention of the community. Impossible levels. Impossible levels have always been eye-catching to the average players, with the most popular ones at the time being levels like Silent Club Stub, Slaughterhouse, and even levels like Sonic Wave. But one of these levels was uploaded to the servers at around the same time, by a guy named Spitfire. And the level in question has still had very little if not no victors in the present day. This is Satanic Club Stub. Satanic Club Step is admittingly not the most special level in the world, and its gameplay isn't anything super crazy either. But the level was pretty okay for its time, and even if it had minuscule decoration, it didn't stop some players from going for practice runs and forming their own thoughts. When the level first started getting traction, people actually thought that the level wasn't physically possible, since little to no one was able to do the first jumps back in the day but it would take barely any time at all for players to realize that the jumps were not only possible, but that an entire practice run was also entirely possible to do. And with the concerns about the level's possibility gone, the level continued to get average relevance throughout the community. The first ever video of Satanic Club Step comes from Zora Zet, but instead of a completion video, Zet showed off a secret way that you had to go into the first ship section in order to do. This specific secret way stayed in the level for quite a while, but was eventually replaced by abusing a bug that switched your gravity if you exited practice mode on a blue orb. Doing this allowed the player to enter the level upside down, causing the player to go upwards into a ship portal, thus completing the level that way. But that obviously wasn't legitimate, and given how hard this level was for the time, it expectedly didn't really go anywhere for a long time. Some of the level's relevance can be attributed to the first ever recorded practice run by German player Jack the Froster back in the middle of 2015, completing a full practice run in 776 attempts. And after this, it became pretty clear that this level was going to require an insane level of skill for any significant runs to be done. The flying sections were very hard, and the beginning was easily the hardest part in the entire level. And as far as level progression goes, it expectedly was radio silent. No one was making any progress. And for a long time, 
The level sat in the back of the minds of a very small number of players. But then, the silence was finally broken by a player named Electrical, who in February of 2017 announced that he was going to go for Satanic Clubs and livestream the progression as well. And with all eyes falling on him, Electrical would, well, never make any progress. A shame. But in July of that same year, somebody would finally start making actual progress, and the player in question was no stranger to extreme challenges. Hequinox is a GD player from France who had beaten many extreme challenges, as well as having world record runs on other former impossible levels. And on July 10th, Hequinox wanted to try to get progress on Satanic Clubstown. He livestreamed a couple of times in 2017, and in those streams he managed to cover nearly the entire level in several runs, getting 65 to 78 and 2 to 7% as his most significant runs. Unfortunately though, due to lack of skill and awareness of the level's balancing, his viewers probably weren't able to put into perspective how insane these runs really were to pull off, regardless of a small cover percentage. But progression still didn't really go anywhere aside from these short runs. But if there's something Hequinox did know, it was that if someone would just sit down and grind the level out, somebody could totally pull it off. It was just a matter of when. And expectedly, after these live streams, the level once again went radio silent for months at a time. But nearly eight months later, something big happened. 2018 may have not been the most eventful year for the game, but for Satanic Club Step, it was a hell of a step. On March 21st, Hequinox uploaded a world record edition of Impossible Levels being one of the most viewed videos on his channel. And one of these levels was, of course, Satanic Club Step. And in the video, Hequinox managed to do the first ever notable run, pulling off 9 to 45%, managing to pull off half of the entire pre-drop as well as the first half of the drop, getting to the ball section afterwards. This was huge. The best progress before this was fractions of what Hequinox had achieved, and in very little time as well. And with Hequinox doing these runs, it was just what the community needed to realize that Satanic Clubstep was definitely possible to beat legitimately. And just under a month later on April 12th, a proper showcase of the level was uploaded by none other than Vitesse. And once this showcase was made, the hype that the level hadn't seen before was starting to show up. And while it was small, it was enough motivation for players to try to do some runs. Along with people going for notable progress, the level would also start to see a couple of remakes. Most of them didn't really go anywhere, but some of them would see pretty decent progression. And going into the new year, the first notable remake was uploaded by a player named Gigamix. Gigamix is a Russian GD player who was mostly known for his verification of 211. Satanic Club Step X, however, is a different story. While it never got verified, the level still has passable decoration with only a couple of nerfs to it as well, like the removal of a mirror portal and some other small changes. Now the only reason this version is brought up is because the first video that Gigamix posted of the level is a video of him getting 30%, getting to the end of the wave. And only a week later, he would upload even more progression, this time doing 23-52. With only two progress videos, Gigamix had the level down in only a couple of runs. But unfortunately for him, Gigamix didn't go any further with his remake. And soon after his verification of 211, it was later found out that Gigamix had hacked the level. And though his progression with Satanic Club Step X happened two years after he hacked 211, it still put a pretty large dent in his credibility. It's possible that his progress on this was also hacked, but either way, Gigamix wouldn't continue any further with the level. And once again, Satanic Clubstep didn't see any progression from anyone for a couple of months. But then, in June of 2019, the level would finally start to see some more progress. On June 2nd, a player named Celebi uploaded a run of Satanic Clubstep onto his channel, and the run he managed to get wouldn't be a run to ignore. On that day, Celebi did this.
This run was incredible. The world record percent on the level before had only been 30% from zero, and Celebi stretched the record by over double that. But it's a little misleading. This run, while incredible, does have a few nerves, especially when you realize that the first ship is nowhere near as hard as in the unnerved, and there were also a couple of other gameplay adjustments all around the level. But that didn't mean his run wasn't impressive, because it certainly was. But as good as this run was, Celebi unexpectedly quit playing the level not too long after getting 68. And for the third time, Satanic Clubstep fell back into radio silence, with no one being able to make any progress. And just like with the last couple of times, it was only a matter of months before somebody else would pick the level back up. And in November of 2019, somebody would. On November 3rd, someone had uploaded a video showcasing a modified version of Satanic Clubstep, which was uploaded by a relatively unknown player named Seven. This version included eventual buffs to the gameplay, more detailed decoration, and general balancing to the level as a whole. This was a big step up for Satanic Clubstep. If there's any level that needed major changes for it to go anywhere, it was without a doubt this one. And even though it may have taken a couple more months for progress to be made, this was the start of something big. And on April 21st, 2020, Seven managed to get 58%, as well as getting 73 to 100. And shortly after getting this run, it evidently became clear that Seven's progress was going to be different from everyone else's that came before his. His progression, especially considering how fast it was, was nothing to be ignored. And in only three days after getting 58, he managed to pull off 61 to 100, and then got 62% from zero. This would make Seven not only the first player to ever get the level in two runs, but it also easily became the world record from zero, since the version that Celebi got 68 on was nerfed. But just like Celebi's version, Seven's world record is also a little misleading, since his version really wasn't much different in its difficulty. Seven was actually seen working on this version in as early as June of 2017, right around the time that he had begun to go for other hard levels as well. And right before the work was started, he left a comment saying he was going to nerf and verify the version on an auto version of the level not too long before. And after copying and removing the auto, Seven would begin the ultimate journey. During the early phase of verification, he posted on his GD profile several times throughout 2017 regarding the progress he was making on the level. And according to the post he was making, he managed to pull off runs like 53%, 37 to 77, and 61 to 100. But with nearly three years going by, Seven wasn't really focused on trying to verify some niche former impossible level. But it wasn't until April of 2020 when the coronavirus caused everyone to quarantine, including Seven. And as for the level's progression, sitting at home not being able to do anything for months on end gave Seven a reasonable excuse to start playing relentlessly. And if it wasn't already clear, this early progression further solidified the possibility of Satanic Clubstep eventually having a victor. And while all this was happening, there weren't really many people who knew about the level in the first place. And with no one else to challenge the verification, Seven had a very heavy grind ahead of him. And it was only a matter of time if he was able to pull it off. And for the next couple of months, that's exactly what he was going to do. But in that same month, somebody else had been grinding Satanic Clubstep in the background, and the player was neither Seven nor Celebi. Wow. Expected to have a, bit of re a bigger reaction, but... Alright, I'll take it. After getting 72% a month prior, on May 16th, Satanic Clubstep was legitimately completed in its unnerved state, being verified by a relatively known player named Aruni. And in 15,300 attempts and a worst fail of 90%, it was over. Aruni stated that the level's difficulty was close to around Bloodlust difficulty, which was at number 7 on the list at the time. 
and while Aroni did use 480 FPS to complete the level, it's still considered legitimate by most. Now, the only reason I bring this up is because the highest FPS that's accepted in the community is 360 FPS or lower. No more. So Aroni using 480 is seen to some as disingenuous. But either way, his verification of Satanic Clubstep is still a remarkable achievement. And as for Seven, he wasn't actually very bothered by Aruni's verification, since for one, he wasn't playing the original, and two, his version was slowly turning into something greater. And following the next couple of months, the grind on his version continued once again. And as Seven kept playing the level, he started to realize a couple of things. He was not only getting better at the game, but he was also becoming so accustomed to the gameplay of Satanic Clubstab that it was for sure only a matter of time before Seven would fall through just like Aruni did back in May. And so, progress once again resumed. Following Aruni's completion of Satanic Clubstab, Seven would see results just a couple of days later, getting runs of 23 to 74, 62% twice, 45 to 97, and 23 to 83 all throughout the span of May. And for the next two months, this pattern of progress would be more or less the same. And while his progress was important, his version of the level was also actively receiving new decoration and tweaks to the gameplay. And it didn't take long for him to make very significant progress, getting 6 to 81, 79, and 94% in the course of barely over two months. And at this point, the level was nearing its completion as a level itself. The level was initially somewhere around Sukup and Hell difficulty, but with multiple buffs over time, the level would slowly become something much, much more difficult than Sukup and Hell. And on January 8th, 2021, Seven's remake was finally finished. This is Diabolic Clubstep. Diabolic Clubstep is menacing. Not only is the remake of the level fully completed, but the level looks great. Every part in the level is themed differently, and overall, the level itself is now for sure worthy of a star rate. When before, the level was lacking anything that could make it worthy other than its absurd difficulty. And going into 2021, Seven pretty much made immediate progress on a version that was already incredibly buffed, getting 37 to 100 on February 23rd. It was also at around the time that he started using the FPS bypass as well, as opposed to using 60 hertz. And at this point, the level was buffed to the point of it being as hard, if not harder than Plaza Pulse Finale. PPF was in the top 30 at the time, but this was only the beginning. As the verification continued in the background, Seven continued to buff the level further almost every time he would get a new best. But the more he played the level, the more he realized just how much harder the level could get. The initial goal was to make it at least harder than Sonic Wave, which was his hardest demon, but the level had one problem. The balancing was just awful. The first 40% was much more difficult than anything else that came after it. Seven tried fixing it up for a while, but to no avail. And with no other way to fix it, Seven decided to gather some playtesters. Some said that the level was as hard as Seri Never Clear, while players like Aruni said it was even as hard as Zodiac. Now the difficulty was getting ridiculous. After hearing what other players had thought, Seven decided to nerf the level down pretty much immediately nerfing it down to around Crimson Planet difficulty, which significantly helped the balancing problems. And with the balancing fixed, progress resumed once again, and very quickly as well, getting 42 to 96 on April 24th.
But unfortunately for him, progress was halted for a couple of months for a number of reasons. The first was Seven giving Tartarus another go in hopes of making big progress. And he very quickly got 50% as well as 43 to 100. <laughs> and after getting these runs in such little time, Seven realized that Diabolic Clubstep might even be harder than Tartarus. Why? Well, the ridiculous buffs of course, what else would it be? The level was so hard at this point that Mike Roz, a player who has unnerfed inners in two runs, said that it was even harder than that. This gave Seven two options. He could either grind out a version that's harder than Abyss of Darkness, or nerf it down at least a little bit, and make it at least harder than Tartarus. And following a crazy grind of getting 61 to 100 and 39% several times from zero, Seven threw in the towel. The level was just way too hard now, and if it was going to be beaten by anyone, it was going to need to be nerfed significantly. Seven was throwing everything he had at the verification. When 2021 began, he gave himself a deadline for the level. August 31st. Could that be done? Well, it certainly could be with enough willpower, and for someone whose hardest is Sonic Wave, he would need a hell of a lot of it. It was a race against the clock. A top one verification in two months time. Here we go. left and only 20% remained. It was all coming down to this. Seven was running out of time and fast. And on September 1st, it happened. Four years, 171,000 attempts, and countless hours of non-stop play, it had finally been done. Seven couldn't believe it. It all started in 2017 when he grabbed a copy for himself from an auto version, and four years later, the verification would become a reality. 
This completion marked not only a monstrous milestone, but it also marked the first top one verified after Tartarus, the hardest demon in Russia before Firework, and most importantly, Seven's best achievement in gaming. It's safe to say that throughout all of his achievements over the years, nothing will top what Seven managed to pull off, at least not for a very long time. And although the level was verified only one day after the deadline he set for himself, he was more than willing to forgive himself. And that is the hardest demon you've never heard of. But we're not done just yet. As for Seven's Tartarus progress, he continued to play it after the verification. And not only did he manage to get 95%, but multiple other sources also pointed towards Diabolic Clubstep being harder than Tartarus. Seven didn't actually realize that the level could be harder when he verified it, and after getting credible enough runs, it was safe to conclude that it very well could be. But until the level becomes a rated extreme, we'll just have to wait and see. And as always, thanks for watching.